Greetings the internet, this is Ninark, and welcome back to my Pokemon style top-down RPG tutorial series. This is part three. Uh, if you haven't seen the other two, you should go back and watch them. If you're watching this on a playlist, you're probably sick and tired of hearing me say that. So today we're going to be putting our uh, actual art and character into our, our player object. Um, I just find that having art in the game gives me a little bit more motivation to finish something because blocks get boring really fast. So yeah, so let's uh, get started. So what we want to do is double click on our player and it'll open up our image uh, editor thing. We want to make sure we have all these ready for ourselves so that uh, you know we're going to need them to actually do this. I'm going to be using a sprite set that I created myself. Um, you can find it on my itch page. Uh, if you want, download it for a dollar. It's pretty cheap. It gives you some characters and it does actually go to the fund of keeping me alive long enough to finish this series. So if you want to see this be, um, you know, go to the end. Also, you want to keep me living and alive, uh, it would be much appreciated if you purchased my assets. In fact, purchase all of them while you're at it. All right, so how do we actually assign our sprites to our character? Well, it's a little bit tedious. I wish there was a slightly better way of doing this, but um, I mean, this is the way to do it. So go up to your animations box right here. It'll say default. You want to click on that and we're going to change it to right idle. And this is going to be when he's facing to the right and not moving. So we go down to this animations frame box. And we're going to right click import frames from files. As you can see, I have all these files here, which are the files that um, you can buy on my itch page. So they're not very super well organized, but uh, yeah, we're going to be just dealing with these ones. The one X, you can use four X. Uh, the four X is just one X is one pixel is one pixel and this is just four times as large as that. All right, so right idle is going to be what we'll click first. Now it's gonna import our frames here in the animation as you can see, he does a little head bob. If you press P, if you click, oops, holy shit. Everything's gone wrong. All right, so now we have these two frames uh, in our character object, but the problem is there's still this first frame. We don't want that. So right click on here and we're going to go to delete and it'll give our character a nice little head bob, and you can see that um, you will be able to see it in game. You can, if you, this is gets complicated or not complicated, but it gets annoying sometimes if you have the wrong tools. Like you can really mess up your sprite. So, click on uh, the rectangle just to be safe. Click here and press P, and you can see our character does nothing because our loop is on no. So this is something that I was going to go into in a second, but for the sake of the fact that we're already dealing with it, let's go into it. So. When we have an animation, by default, the loop is on no for no reason, which is a really awful thing to be uh, in existence because most of the time when you have an animation, you want it to loop. I don't understand, but it's okay. So we want to set the speed to really anything, but I'm going to make it six for some reason, no reason really, loop, and we want it to be yes. This is important so that our character actually animates. So now if you click on this, make sure you don't have either this the set origin point or the collision polygon set or really any of these because it'll mess up your sprite. This is the safest one to click on your project with. Press P and you'll come and as you can see there's something really screwed up about where he is and this is because our origin point is in different places in this sprite and in this sprite so if we set this origin to top left as well. Uh, you can actually, the easiest way to do this and we'll do this at the end just to make sure, you can right click and apply to all animations and that's going to just set everything up to the top left corner. So now when we select this, select this, press P, you can see him do a little bob motion. Yeah. Uh, so that was kind of a disaster, but it worked out. So now you learned a lot about, you know, this whole image editor thing. All right. So we're going to right click and add a new animation. We're going to call it right walk or run. It's less letters. Anyway, so we'll click right run. We're going to import frames from files and we're going to go over to our right run in the 1x. Make sure you don't accidentally use the 4x. I really should have put these in folders. In fact, by the time you see this video, this will be organized on my itch page. Anyway, so uh, 1x right run. We're going to click on that. Make sure you delete this first frame. Right click and delete. And as you can see, he's, he's walking all nice. Uh, set the origin point. It will do that afterwards at the end because you'll get the idea. So this gets tedious, but this is basically the thing. So if you want to skip ahead um, or pause it and do all this stuff and then skip ahead, uh, that might be reasonable. So I'm just going to do this in silence and you can listen to this beautiful music that my friend made. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, 
As wheels hit pavement, it's amazing. He drives safely despite his lack of engagement. On the search for a hussy, preferably one who ain't too fussy. I'm cool to be in the back of my Uber. Often told my main game is super. She don't know about her third member though, a different being. So I may have to fool her. 2007 Civic, trust your vehicle, stick shift. Ride one and find you. Get over there real swift. Although she may need a facelift, it don't matter. Beating with the local point of interest like a vocal. She live in a slave compound, right around downtown. Gonna try tonight for the old mountain pound. Just when I have it in my clutches, she sees my true face, kicks the door and starts running. Wow, that was a disaster. When it comes to game, I assumed I was a master. Always got me on the horse a little faster. Touch a spliff to my lips to get a little higher. Through the world as an outsider, real life alien, night transport provider. Push the whip in the dark. I got a CD quest I need to embark. Looking for some trouble, gonna find it even if I have to lift all the rubble Cause the quest for cash, take a nigga straight out of this bubble Uber driver, Uber driver Midnight rider, midnight rider, Uber driver, Uber driver Midnight rider, midnight rider, Uber driver, Uber driver Nowadays, been focusing on paper Last thing I need to ride is saying I tried the rape her She knocked me on my side hustle, that's my only option So stop flexing my brain muscle It's funny, I once had supreme wisdom now I got two jobs and an Uber car to provide my income. All this because I rejected my alien kingdom. So go figure. I'll be hauling around. Cool. All right. Sorry about that. That was silly. I made some mistakes. It gets complicated. Anyway, so uh, we want to do two things before we go back into our game. Select the right idle just as your default. Um, and we're going to zoom in. We're going to first make sure that the origin point is in the top left. Uh, it might be in the middle. It usually sets it there. So we're going to right click and apply to all animations. That's really important so that everything is being drawn from the same spot. Then we also want to do one more thing. Actually, we're going to do two more things. Uh, select our right idle, go to our collision polygon, set it to how we had it before with the one pixel border around. And if I knew what I was doing, maybe this would be better. This one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm going to right click on here and we're going to go to apply all, all the animations again. And then one last thing uh, that I should have been doing while I was importing is make sure you select all these, change the speed to something consistent. I just chose six randomly and then make sure loop is on. This is very important for all of them. So six loop on, etc., etc. You can leave it at five if you want. If you're lazy, I'm not going to judge you. Laziness is the brevity of wit or something. Laziness is the ability to not even make a joke. That's how lazy it was. So it was a joke about being lazy, and I was being lazy about it. Okay, so this should all be correct, hopefully, and we'll find out in a second. So as you can see, now we have a little character here. He's actually existing and pretty nice. So how do we actually get the code to work in our advantage? So let's go to our event sheet. Let's look at what cool stuff we have. Okay, so we're going to leave this. This is fine. Uh, we're actually not going to add anything to this. We're going to go down to our step timer is greater than zero. And we're going to add some stuff to it right now. So give me one sec. I just need to check something. Okay, so we're just going to, it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to be, if step timer is greater than zero, which means he's moving. If direction is zero, which is to the right, we're going to go to our player. And then we're going to set animation, and then we're going to type in our animation to write run. And then we're going to do this for the next four. So 90 is down, if you remember. Set animation. We're going to go to down uh, run, not idle. We'll get to that in a second. Then this one is going to be, uh, this is going to be left idle. Sorry, left run, not left idle. Do as I say, not as I do or actually don't do either of the things that I do or say. In fact, make your own decisions. Up, run, cool. So if we play it, um, you'll see that he does actually walk in the direction, but he continues to walk forever, and we want him to actually stop. So how do we do that? We're gonna add a whole new event block. All right, now this is really important for you to understand. So uh, I'm gonna create the event block, and then you'll see why it doesn't work or what happens and then we'll fix it. So we're going to go to add a new event and we're going to go to player uh, compare variable if step timer 
is equal to 0. All right, and then what we want to do, you can copy this over here, our direction. We want to add a blank sub of it, so just press B and then paste it in there. And so if direction is 0, then we want to set the animation, player uh, set animation to write idle. And then we can copy this a couple times. We're going to change this number to 90, and you can do this. You can copy and paste from above or however you feel most comfortable doing this. You don't have to do it this way. I'm just doing it this way so it's more obvious what I'm actually doing. So if you'll remember, 90 is down, so we want down idle. This one's going to be left idle, and this one's going to be up idle. Okay, now let's press play and see what happens. All right, so he is idling. I go down, he's idling, but watch this. It's a little bit hard to see. It's hard to see on the side ones because it looks fine, but if he's going up, only one foot is going up. It's actually resetting the animation every time the step timer is uh, equal to zero. Now, how do we fix that? Okay, so uh, actually, it's really simple. All we're gonna do, make sure you grab this event block, and if you want a better idea of how event blocks work, this little minus sign will collapse them, which is really important, um, really useful. You should get used to using that because uh, it keeps your code nice and clean and um, organized. So all we're gonna do is just grab here, make sure you grab on the side, not here, because this is gonna do that. That's not what we want. We want to grab on the side here and just put it above this character. So, now let's press play and you'll see that it actually doesn't reset. As you can see, both of his legs move and it works great. All right, code alert. I really want you guys to understand this, uh, why this works and why it wasn't working before. So let's kind of go through a, a virtual kind of a walkthrough of what happens. All right, so our player is not moving at all. Step timer is zero. Um, nothing is happening. We have not done anything in the game. So right when we press the right arrow here, it's going to set our step timer to grid size and our direction to zero, which is not really relevant in this situation, so we'll ignore it. Our right arrow is down. It sets our step timer to grid size, which is 32. Right. So now that we've done this block, we're going to go down to this block. Is it equal to zero? No. So it's going to skip over that. Is it greater than zero? Yes, it's 32 now. So what happens? Well, it's going to move our player uh, at the direction. Then it's going to subtract how far it moved from the step timer. So now right here, it's 30. It's 30 and it's setting our animation right to run. Now this doesn't actually, all of this block goes at once, so it's not checking if it's zero, then doing this, and then doing this. It checks if it's zero, and then does all three of these things. I hope you're still with me. Okay, so let's, so it's, it's step timer is greater than zero, so it's 32. It subtracts back down to 30, and it sets our animation to run. So now it's at 30, so it goes up here, etc., etc., and it goes down to two, right? Okay, so is it zero? No. Is it zero again? Still no. Okay, but it is greater than zero, it's two. So it's gonna go here to our direction, it's going to move our character, it's going to subtract the speed from the step timer. So now our step timer is zero, but it's not checking this again, so it's still setting our animation to right run, it's leaving the animation there. And now that it is at zero, it's gonna go up here and check. Is it zero? Okay, right arrow is still down, right, okay. Step timer to grid size. So now it's back to 32. So it never reaches zero. By the time it comes back here again, it's back to 32. So what was the problem before? Well, before, when this was below this block, as I'll demonstrate here by dragging and dropping, you'll see that when it gets to greater than zero, and this is actually a bad example because it's out of the thing. I don't know why. Anyway, just assume that this is below here. Um, when it reaches greater than zero, so it's at two, it's gonna subtract the, the player free speed from the step timer, so it's gonna go to zero. Then when if this is below here, now it's checking, oh, it is zero. So what's going on? Well, direction is zero, so set it to right idle. And that's going to reset the animation because when it comes back around again, it's gonna go back, okay, well, now it's greater than zero again, so we have to restart the animation back to right run. I hope that made sense. I really want you guys to understand order of operations and why uh, it really helps with debugging, especially because it seems so obvious. I mean, like, really, we didn't change anything. By debugging this, the only thing we did was move this to a different location. Um, but yeah, it's really important that you guys pay attention to that. Uh, remember, the computer's a moron, so you gotta be very, very, very specific with him. 
Okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, so uh, one last thing I want to do. Um, let's take this step timer to zero and uh, put it down here at the bottom. And if step timer is zero, we're going to change all these so you can just cut them and uh, add another condition here. And we're going to go to keyboard on key pressed, right. And we're going to not, I don't even know why I copied this because I have to change pretty much everything, but it's okay. Uh, we're going to set our value here of our direction to zero. Um, is there something? Whatever. I'll just do this by hand. Do, do, do. Ignore me, or don't ignore me, actually. Do exactly what I'm doing. So as you can see, I'm setting all the arrow keys uh, to the corresponding areas. We can just copy this and paste it here and here and here. Cut all these out. Let's set direction to 90, 180, and not that, and 270. Oh, I'm doing this quick. Uh, this is like not super important. We'll be using it later for like reading signs and things. It's just so that uh, when our character is not moving, so let's say we move him over here and he goes up. Now he's facing up, but we want to be facing the wall. If I tap the button, he looks. Uh, that doesn't work in the other instances because it's checking to see if it's colliding and it's checking if it's colliding first. So then it's saying, well, it's, it, it is colliding there, so we're not going to change his direction. So this just allows us to turn our character around. But as you can see, our character walks, the animations will work perfectly, he doesn't walk through walls, he is a very adamant explorer, he really wants to catch some of those parcel creatures to show off to his friends and family. Yeah. Cool. Alright, well uh, I hope you learned a lot. Um, please go and buy things from me. It will very much uh, encourage me to make more tutorial videos more often, even though I love doing these so it's, you know, it's really not a big deal, but it would be nice to have like a million or two dollars. Uh, yeah, cool. All right, well, I'll uh, see you all in the next video. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing next, but I am going to Japan for two weeks, so I apologize if there will be no videos. That's why I was kind of cramping these in real quick before I leave so you guys can get something started. So yeah, uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe, and... Um, just relax and breathe in slow